Okay, I frequently have received questions about um, why I, as a UU minister, wear a clerical collar um, on a very regular basis. Um, so let me go ahead and give the long, um, probably boring story about all of this. So I had already experimented with wearing the collar out in the community. I'm in Texas, um, and so I was curious about what it would mean when I, a you know, um, woman, showed up wearing it. Um, and then just shortly after I was ordained, my eldest daughter, who was in high school, began telling me about a classmate of hers who was um, gay and possibly trans and didn't feel that they could tell you know their family about it and were really worried that God hated them and that kind of led to me there was a, a Starbucks right across from the high school and that led to me just going over to Starbucks wearing the collar and a rainbow pin um, just taking my like my laptop and just being there with the idea that maybe some kid would see me and that would just put the idea in their head of, oh, maybe God doesn't necessarily hate me because I'm gay or trans or whatever. Um, and then what wound up happening is um, I got approached several times and had some really meaningful conversations. Um, at this time, some, some adults, but at this time it was mostly teens that were just like, wait, you're a minister and you're wearing a rainbow pin? Like, do you even know what that means? Um, and so then that actually became kind of a spiritual discipline to me of making sure that every Friday um, I was in the collar and the rainbow pin and that I was out in the community. I got called to a new ministry in Cedar Park, Texas, which is right north of Austin. It's in Williamson County, which has been a red county, but it is going more and more blue. Um, anyway, so I just continued the tradition then. Being in Austin also means that, um, like most UU ministers, when I go out um, and do social witness, that I'm in the collar and being in a capital city, um, Every other year when they come back in session, I'm often down at the Capitol, so I was wearing it for that. I got involved in um, a local interfaith group, and so I was wearing the collar for that. Um, basically, whenever I was representing um, the church or clergy, I was wearing the collar. Um, I started being invited you know, to give invocations, like at city council meetings, school board meetings. Our school board, um, there were some uh, bonkers people showing up, so I was showing up um, and speaking at some of these, and so I would be in collar for that. Separate from all that, several years ago, I read one of those articles about people like Steve Jobs and others who wear the same outfit you know they have multiple copies of an outfit they like and they wear the same exact thing every single day just because it's one less decision to make and that really appealed to me other than funny t-shirts and cowboy boots i am just not a clothes person so um, at some point several years ago i my uniform was a white shirt and black slacks that was great no decisions to make, just wear that every day. Um, at a certain point, I had to face the fact that my entire life I've been a klutz and it's probably not gonna change. And so the white shirts were swapped out for black shirts. So I was already wearing black shirts and black pants all the time. And um, then this fall after my, I'd been thinking during my sabbatical, um, about what I wanted kind of the next stage of my ministry to, to be. I had fallen into the trap that so many clergy members do where the biggest priority in, in your job is being the CEO of a nonprofit. That's still part of what I do, but I wanted the top priority to be being a religious leader. 
So that combined with the fact that I wanted to be out in the community more often, combined with the fact that I knew the Texas Ledge would be coming back into session this year, combined with the fact that I was um, starting uh, really doing ministry on TikTok and um, it was helpful to, you know, to, to show up as a minister in many of these videos. Anyway, um, I'm now collaring all the time. Um, and frankly, it, it makes my getting dressed in the morning a lot simpler. Um, but the fact that I'm in the collar whenever I'm working all the time, whether, you know, if I'm at the grocery store, restaurant, you know, whatever, um, it ha I, there have been so many pretty amazing conversations that I've had. There have been several times when I was out like at coffee or at lunch with one of my congregants and someone came up and talked to us and it was because I was in a collar and because they saw that that progress, you know, rainbow pin, um, that they came up and talked to us. So um, anyway, that's how I got here. Oh, and I want to mention this because it's, it's uh, kind of crazy to me, but it is still an issue for me to show up visibly a woman wearing a collar. Um, I, I've never had anyone come up and say anything abusive or anything like that to me. Um, but I, what I have had is a lot of women who come up, um, and not necessarily Christians. I mean, I've, I, um, Jewish women have come up, I, I've all like all over the place. Women come up to me and want to talk to me about it. And it's clear that for some people it is incredibly healing to see a woman show up in a collar as a religious leader.